I am planning a trip into Afghanistan. There's been a war there for years. The Taliban are now in charge. They put in some extremely strict religious rules. And we've all seen just recently the pictures of people clinging to the bottom of airplanes, trying to get out of the country, trying to survive. So is it such a good idea now to fly into Kabul airport? For years, the Taliban forces have been trying to push out every single American soldier, trying to kill them. Is it possible for me to fly into the country now as a tourist? Do they have embassies in other countries? And can I simply apply, filling out a form, and then getting a nice little visa printed in my passport? Am I supporting an economy on which the USA has put sanctions? Is it safe? Can I fly into the country without legal issues? Will I be able to find places to sleep? How will I travel between different cities? And finally, will I be able to leave the country without a problem? Afghanistan consulate and most places around here won't accept the old dollars which are green you need to have these uh, the new type of dollars that have the blue stripe in the middle and then a lot of the blue coloration on them I just uh, submitted my application they mentioned a little bit about how people with guns from your country came to our country but I think tomorrow I'll be able to show up and get that visa. Okay, so it's all good? Yeah, it's ready so you can visit Afghanistan. Just go there, roam in Afghanistan, explore the new places. One of the important preparations for the trip is buying a shalwar kameez so that you, you blend in a bit more while you're there. So before entering the country, buying the vest, the long shirt, the pants, and even the shoes. So of course, getting out of Pakistan past the passport control was no problem. Now we're just waiting for the flights and then we'll be flying into Kabul. After passing airport security, we took a taxi back to the hotel, had a quick dinner, and then went to sleep. Good morning. Uh, we're now in, in Kabul. Uh, we flew in yesterday in the evening. It was very uh, easy passing through security at the airport. And then we met our guide, Safi. Uh, hello guys, hope everything is going well with you. But uh, yesterday, our friend Mr. Nicholas came up with him in the higher port. Thanks God, and here is everything is okay. Security very well. All the checkpoint is okay. Still, uh, everything going well. Yes, uh, everything is going very well, and we're going to be with Safi for the next nine days or so, exploring Afghanistan. And uh, thank you very much for helping us to make sure there's no you're, problems. You are welcome. During the morning, the guides went out to get the necessary paperwork done. In order to travel around Afghanistan, you need to have lots of permission letters. Um, otherwise, you'll just get stopped uh, by checkpoints as soon as you get to a new region. Then around lunchtime, we went out and had some uh, delicious food. Um, this, this meat here just falls right off the bones. Um, it was really 
spectacular. There's something about the meat here in Afghanistan. It's just totally delicious. And then after that, we went to the Babur Gardens. The garden itself is beautiful. It's relaxing. It's cool. It's calm. It's green. It was pretty heavily destroyed, including the palace here being quite destroyed during all of the internal conflicts. But now it's been rebuilt. And as of recently, it's been separated into both a women's and a men's half. Now we're headed out of Kabul and going to Bamiyan. Just entered into Bamiyan and now continuing the journey further down the road. We're now going through, I believe the name is Bigiram Pass, going further and further into Bamiyan. As you can see, it's windy, it's actually quite cool, it's a very nice temperature. I think we have some quite exceptional views up ahead. Here we are inside the Bamian Caves on the side of this mountain. Uh, these caves are carved into the uh, very large portion of the slope here. And up until just recently, there were actually families living in here. And of course, followers of uh, Buddha, as is quite apparent by the very large statues uh, carved into the mountain. And the rooms are sizable enough where you can actually see people living in there and well my very limited but personal experience with caves is that they're actually not so cold at night they actually keep quite a lot of heat from the day and there's no not much airflow so it don't get so cold so I can see how it would be possible to live here even with a family in the mountains Entering now into Band E Amir Park, and let's see what we're going to find inside.
uh, tell us about these mountains in the past was uh, uh, big dragon and eating the people eating that animals but one time uh, the leader of religious came to here and asked and prayed the god oh my god changing this uh, big animal the god accepted the prayer of the that guys and changing to stool thank you so much this behind me and also up the mountain in front of us is the Zahok Fortress. Over 1,000 years old, probably took more than 15 years to build by a very powerful king from this area. And with a fortress like this, back in the day of course, you could have quite a lot of control over all of the surrounding areas, a very large region. Uh, if you were attacked, you probably have food for one, two, three months to, uh, to wait it out. We just finished lunch, which was delicious. And now we are continuing our trip back from Bamiyan towards Kabul. So I ordered the brain masala, and it actually does have brain. I think cow brain, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Just that I was a little bit worried because it is brain masala, but the texture is just—it's like juicy, a little bit like like fatty. It's so good. So you should try brain masala too. Here we are, back at Kabul Airport again, getting ready for our flight to Mazari Sharif.
go. I told him you have to eat this and then you have to survive. After. And oh my god, look! The other guy! What did you order that it came like this? Banana cacao mix. Banana cacao mix. Okay, banana cacao mix. That's <laughs> always so. so, so. What, are, what are you going to do? I'm going to go outside of the hotel at night to try Alone. to find some ice cream. <laughs> Alone? Totally Alone. With no guide. No guide. At night. <laughs> dangerous. Dangerous Afghanistan. Very dangerous. Okay. But it's worth it. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, he's me. Do I feel more safe or less safe now? <laughs> <laughs> we got some chocolate. <laughs> <towels. laughs> Look at that. Standing here on the wall of Balk Fortress. And you can see this wall used to be very tall, like these pieces back here. And it went all the way around. Very big. All the way to this side. But now, after I think so many hundreds of years, maybe a thousand years, it's almost starting to look just like the rest of the desert here just degrading and eroding back into the sand Olha o que ele tá comendo, tomando. Olha a diarreia vindo aí. Today is my last morning here in Afghanistan. We're at Mazar Sharif. We're gonna get up, breakfast, go to the airport, fly to Kabul, and from Kabul I'm going to be flying to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. Almost on the flight back to Kabul. Labor will be on our flight out of here very soon. We're just now on the flight, flying out to Jeddah. Uh, how'd you like the trip? Amazing. We didn't get into the little boats. No, no little box, thankfully. <laughs> anyway, now we're going to uh, Jeddah. The flight is about to take off, and I'm very excited. The trip went very well. Tasha Kui, Afghanistan. Now that I'm in Saudi Arabia, I have a few takeaways for you 
from my trip to Afghanistan. First, it's totally possible to travel to Afghanistan now. The Taliban is a peacekeeping force. They're a police force. They're no longer a military searching to kill foreigners. The, the chaos of Kabul airport, it was a one-time event. Traveling through Kabul airport for me was no problems whatsoever. Very smooth and easy. Getting a visa, also pretty straightforward. They have embassies in Dubai, Pakistan, other countries, and you apply, add some information, pay a visa fee, and it's basically uh, the exact same as uh, any other country. And of course, when you're in the country, you need to follow the Taliban's rules. Simple as that. That's the same in any country. Get a guide, especially if it's your first trip to Afghanistan. Uh, in almost all cases, you need an invitation letter. I don't speak any Farsi, so it would, would have been very difficult to book hotels, to book logistics and transportation. Uh, and there's, there's quite a few papers you need, official documents that give you permission to visit different regions of the country. And without a guide, I would have had no idea which papers to get. You also do get a lot of attention. As soon as people figure out you're a foreigner, you get a bit surrounded by people, especially in Kabul. Uh, they're just interested. But a guide who keeps you moving, uh, you don't need to ask anyone stupid questions on the streets, trying, trying to speak with them in broken English. Definitely before you go, when you're in Pakistan or in any country where you can buy it, buy a, a shalwar kameez. That's the local dress. You, you then blend in much more. It helps you just to get less attention on the streets, but also there are numerous checkpoints you have to go through confirming those legal papers that you got. And having the, the local clothes, uh, many of the guards just looked at us, assumed that we were some family from Afghanistan and let us go. The internet connection while I was there was generally pretty terrible. Sometimes it was okay in the hotel. Sometimes the hotel would have Wi-Fi and you'd be connected with no connection whatsoever. There were some scheduled power outages as well. So of course, no internet then. The woman I traveled with, she even bought a local SIM card. And in places like mazar sharif it didn't work at all, even in the center of town. Now with food, the two main dishes that you might get a lot are the pulao, which is rice with meat, and kebab, which is bread with meat. But I would recommend expanding much further, maybe going to some restaurants where you know, they're a little bit nicer, uh, it's still pretty inexpensive by Western standards, and just trying to get some different dishes that you find on the menu. Uh, I branched out, I'm trying things like the, the brain masala, and uh, even if you're not quite as venturous as getting brain, uh, I was so happy trying all of the, the different uh, dishes that were available. They, they were different than anywhere I'd had elsewhere, and uh, I believe you should have that experience too. And finally, addressing the fact that the Taliban is now in control of Afghanistan. By visiting, was I financing terrorist activities. My personal opinion is that beyond the $130 that I paid for the visa, my money was going to friendly, peaceful Afghani citizens, paying my guide, paying people who have businesses, paying restaurants, even paying the money changers. They're all living under extremely heavy sanctions and I feel very glad to be supporting them as individuals. Now with the new government, some people support them and some people are very against them. I think the majority of people living in Afghanistan 
like some aspects of the new government and are opposed to different aspects of the Taliban government. But I think that everyone, everyone is glad that there is peace. There's no more ongoing war. The Taliban now act more as a police force. There's more stability. There's less threats of violence and maybe death for you and your family. And I think the majority of people living in Afghanistan are glad for that change. I'm glad too, because it's because of that peace that I was able to go visit. And I think you should be grateful that there is peace in Afghanistan because you can visit as well. Thank you.